In this video tutorial, we're going to model a bioswale in Rhino. In the following video, we're going to model the plants for the bioswale and render the scene in Lumion. So let's get started. I'm going to start a new scene, Control N. I'm going to pick small objects feet as my template. I'm going to start drawing in front view. I'm going to double click on front to make that large. I'm going to turn on grid snap here at the bottom. I'm going to start drawing with a rectangle. I'm going to draw the sidewalk. I'm going to draw it nine feet, almost a whole grid increment. I'm going to draw um, a curb starting one foot above. I'm going to go down um, and make a base for this. That's my retaining wall. I'm going to draw a soil layer right here. And then I will add a foot to my uh, to the bottom of my retaining wall. I'm going to select both of these curves. I'm going to use the trim command. to trim off the intersection. Then I'm going to join them with the join command. So this will be my sidewalk. This will be my gravel subbase. This will be my retaining wall and curb. Now um, I'm going to mirror this so that I can um, have the other side of my bioswale. I'll use the mirror command. I'll draw it right here and place my other retaining wall. Now I'm going to draw the curve of my bioswale between this. I'm going to use the command interpolate curve, interp curve. And I'll draw a nice water channel right here. Enter to end. If I want to adjust the control points here, I can. Okay, now I have a nice profile, a nice section for my bioswale. I'm going to go back to four point view and I'm going to set my viewports to this perspective to shaded and my other viewports um, I may set to ghosted. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to extrude the elements of hardscape so we can start to see this scene in 3D. I'm going to select all of these and I'm going to extrude them straight and extrude the curves. So I can use the command extrude curve. I can also go to either surface or solid, extrude planar curve straight. I'm going to extrude these um, five grid increments. And you can see I have a solid extrusion of my curves, creating um, all of my hardscape around the bioswale, framing it. Now, I could also extrude this curve for the bioswale in a bit. Um, but that's going to create a boring straight channel. So I'm going to copy the control curves and edit them a bit first. I'm going to select my curve. Copy and paste, and I'm going to move it a grid increment. Copy and paste, move it a grid increment. Copy and paste, move it a grid increment. I'm going to repeat this five times until I have all my control curves. I'm going to leave the curves at the end the same. I'm going to edit the ones in the middle. I'm going to move their control points. So I'm going to select all the control points here 
in the middle and shift them to the left. And I may select ones in the middle, oops, in the middle of the curve. Um, them more. I may select this one for example and perhaps this one and shift them to the right to make a gentler slope here. I'm going to repeat this for each of the curves. So this curve, I'm going to select its control points and I'm going to shift them to the right the opposite way to create a sinuous channel. Select all these curves and drag them to the left, to the opposite side. You may move the channel, the center of the channel, further to the left. Make a steep slope on that side. Move these control points a bit to the right to make a shallower slope on that side. So the last one, I'm going to select my control points, shift them a bit to the right. Move my channel center over a bit and move these two to the left to make a shallower slope. That's looking good. So I've started to define the cross-section curves that will make up my bioswale. I'm going to select all of these curves now. Zoom all extent in the shortcuts in the command line Z, enter, A, enter, E, enter. And I'm going to loft these curves. I'm going to use the command loft. I can find that under surface loft. I'm going to set the style to normal. I'm going to set to do not simplify. And I can see a nice surface here now. I'm going to hit OK. My loft looks fine. Now I want to make my ground into a solid surface. So there are many ways to do this. What I'm going to do is, um, first of all, create a boundary surface. So I'm going to actually draw a box. In front view, I'll draw the profile of it first. I'm going to draw it creating the whole of my base. Then I'll draw the depth of it here in top view. And that's going to create part of my ground. Um, and then I'm going to extrude the surface to it. So solid, extrude surface to boundary, straight. My boundary surface will be that plane right there. I used a sub-object selection, so I used Control-Shift-Click to select the top face of the base. Now, this is looking good, but it's not all the way there yet. Um, this bottom plane is intersecting my um, retaining wall, and these are separate surfaces right now. I can combine them. What I'm going to first do is a Boolean difference to subtract my retaining walls from this ground plane. So I'm going to select the ground plane. I'm going to use the command Boolean difference. I'm going to make sure delete input is not checked, is no. I'm going to su subtract with um, both of these um, extrusions for the retaining wall. Now I've cut the retaining wall out of this ground. I'm going to select both the ground and the, um, the 
my swale channel and I'm going to do a boolean union. I can either type in boolean union in the command line or solid union. Now this is all one geometry. You can probably delete the surface that I extruded down and this is looking nice. We have two more things to do, three more things. We're going to make holes, curb cuts in the uh, retaining wall and curb so that water can flow into the bioswale and off of the asphalt. We're going to add a check dam so that we can control the water level in the bioswale and drop sediment. And we're also going to add water to the bioswale. Let's start with the curb cuts. We use the command make hole. So first I need to draw some cutting geometry. I'm going to draw a polyline. I'm going to draw it at each of these major grid increments. So I'll draw the curve. I'm going to put an angle at it so I have a camphor. I'm going to draw it above, higher than the geometry so I make sure I'm really cutting all the way through. So this will be my cutting object, and I'm going to cut through the curb now. Use the command make hole. I'm going to cut through this curb. I select the curb I want to cut through, and then I make sure I cut all the way through it. I'm going to hit enter to run the command again and cut through this opposite curb. That looks good. Now I'm going to move my cutting object over to the next grid increment. I'm going to run the command again. I'm going to move it two more times. There we go. I can delete my cutting object now. So now I have curb cut, so we'll let the water nicely flow into my bioswale. Now I'm going to add a check dam so I can control the water height within the bioswale. I'm going to put it right in the middle. I'm going to draw a box. right here. I don't need to worry too much about the height because I can adjust these things. I'll start drawing something like that. I'll draw the depth beneath the water channel. So that is the start of my check dam. I don't necessarily need it so wide. So I could uh, scale it with a gumball with the red handles. That's probably good. I'm going to now cut a hole in it so I can put a gate that lets me control a variable water height that will flood through this. I'm going to draw a rectangle in front view. And move my rectangle onto the face of this. I want to adjust this now. I might use the command scale 1D. To adjust the uh, size. That looks fine. Maybe I don't want it that wide. I'll use the gumball to make it a little thinner. Oh, that's probably fine. So now I'm going to use the make hole command to cut through this. Make hole. I select the dam and I cut through it. 
Now I've made a nice cut. I'm going to reuse this rectangle now to model the um, to model the surface to model the uh, gate. I'm going to move this to the middle of the grid with um, the command move, and I'm going to move it. I set the vector here on top view. I'm going to make the movement amount 0 0.375, I think. Um, that'll allow me to make a thickness of 0.25 in the middle. So now I've moved it to the right place. I'm going to do extrude curve. I'm going to extrude it. I set the, the vector here in top view, the direction, and I'm going to type in the distance 0 0.25 and enter and there I have the thickness of this. I can delete the curve now. Um, I probably want to lower the height of this so the, that water can cross. I'm going to do scale 1D. could have also used the gumball. Draw to the top and I'll lower it, say a grid increment. The idea is this is a gate that you could move to set what sort of flood level overflow you need. Now we're almost done. We just need to add water to our scene. Um, almost done. I'm going to, before I add water, I'm going to camphor the corners on this. So I'm going to use the command camphor edge, which is a solid command. Solid, fillet edge, camphor edge. I'm going to use a camphor distance of one, and I'm going to click on this edge. Enter, I see the preview. I'm going to just camphor the corners on this. Just a little bit of detail to make it look a bit better. OK, let's add the water to it now. What we're going to do is model a box, and then use Boolean differences to trim it to the um, first surface. So I'm going to make a box. I'm going to start the height where I want my water level to be. I'm going to make the water level probably quite a bit lower on, on one side than the other. So I'll model the box. It can be wider than the scene needs to be. And I'll draw it. about halfway through the scene. I'm probably going to shift it over a bit so I make sure. And then I'm going to scale this right into the middle. So I'm going to use the scale 1D command. I'm going to scale this. I'll scale by reference. First I scale to this corner. Then I'm going to type in the distance. It should be Probably 20, see, 25, 24 and a half. 24 and a half is perfect. That puts me right in the middle of the gate. So I have this water surface. And now I'm going to subtract it from the earth and the, um, the dam. I select the water. Type in the command Boolean difference, delete input no, and I'm going to sub select my subtraction objects. I'm going to select the earth, I'm going to select the bioswale and the gate, hit enter. That's trim my object down just to where I want the water on this side. It's looking good. I'm going to add water to the other side of my bioswale now. I'm going to draw a box. Make it wider than it needs to be. And I'll draw it approximately. I'm going to move it over to this side. I'm going to check the distance. I want this to be, I use the distance command. Right now, this is 
26.5, I'm going to make it 25.5. I use the command scale1d, draw from this corner to that corner, and then I'm going to set my distance to 25.5. I see the preview, it looks just right. I click to accept. Now, I may set the height. This is pretty flooded, which is interesting. Um, right up to the lip of the check dam. I might lower it one grid interval. That looks good. Now I'm going to subtract, do a Boolean difference from the uh, earth and the dam again. So I select this object, my water, Boolean difference, and subtract from the earth, from the check dam and the gate. And I've trimmed my object. Looks good. Now we are ready to assign materials to our scene. We need to assign materials for Lumion to easily pick up the different objects. So I'm going to name my layers by material, and I'm going to assign materials by layer to stay nicely organized. So I'm going to make layer one concrete. I'll make layer two um, gravel, layer three ground, Layer four, metal, and layer five, water. So I'm going to go ahead and select my two water objects. I'm going to right click on the water layer and go change object layer to move them onto the water layer. I'll check that, toggling on and off visibility with this little light bulb. I'm going to go to the material column here. I'm under the layer manager and click on the water orb. I'm going to click on the drop down in the material list, use a new material, import from material library. Water is under miscellaneous, and I'm going to pick water rippled. Okay, to assign that. I'm going to change this to rendered mode so I can see my material now. I'm also going to delete all the curves. So I'm going to go to edit, um, select objects, select curves, and I'll put them on another layer. Change object layer to the curves layer and hide them and lock them. Okay, we've got water added on here now. Let's add some concrete. I'm going to go to my concrete layer. I'm going to select every object I want to be concrete. Um, I'm also I'm going to select the paving as well just to keep things a bit simpler. I'm going to right click on concrete, change object layer. I'm going to assign a material. Click on the drop down, use a new material, import from library. I'm going to go to architectural, wall, concrete. And the pick the concrete light and assign that. My scene's starting to look like something. I'm going to pick the metal gate here and put it on the metal layer, change object layer, click on the material orb, click on the drop down, use a new material, import from material library, metal, core 10, core 10 rusty, and accept. Now I've got my gravel layer to still to do. I'm going to shift click to select both of my gravels. I'm going to right click on the gravel layer, change object layer, click on the material orb, click on the drop down, use new material, import from material library. I'm going to browse to architectural, exterior, gravel, and I'm going to pick the gravel small gray stone. The regular gravel would be fine too. I'm going to assign that. Finally, I'm going to select my earth, move it onto the ground layer, right click, change object layer, click on the material orb, click on the drop down, use a new material, import from material library, and I'm going to browse to architectural, exterior, gravel, gray dirt, and assign that material. And we're not going to worry about making the materials we're rendering look nice because we're going to worry 
with that and moving on in the next session.